the internet ciphers are um, just really born out of this, you know, need for our people to be connected. Um, and even though we're practicing physical distance, physical distancing, um, just staying socially connected. And that's something that Iman's like arts and culture work has been really just, you know, pushing for ever since we really, we got started um, because we know that there, that the arts is a powerful way to unite disconnected people and to facilitate like radically reimagining our world and, um, you know, just inspiring that, that healing. And so we're super grateful to our artists during this time. We know that our artists are our frontline workers in many ways. We know that they're the ones who are making all those creative masks, shout out Um Jamali, um, posting the IG lives and are just, you know, putting out this messaging uh, that's so needed through visual art that we see around the world. Um, and so these, and the cipher again is something that Iman draws upon a lot uh, as some being, you know, uh, of course coming from, from hip hop as like this artistic explosion, but also coming from uh, just different communities, uh, spiritual communities and social, you know, social justice communities, the peace circles, um, or just sitting in, in circle to get closer to the most high is something we see all across the world. And so the idea of the cipher is that it's, there's, it, there's equity throughout it, um, that there is no beginning, no end, and that we all are contributing to it. Uh, all of the energy that we bring is affecting the way that the cipher lives and the way that the cipher shows up. I'll um, introduce our, um, and with that opening and our uh, permission from our elders, I'd also just want to acknowledge the indigenous people of all of the lands that we're on, Milwaukee, Atlanta, Chicago, there's so many tribes. So I encourage us all to look into the tribes that are native to the, the land that we're on. Um, you know, just given we're experiencing this pandemic, we know that the indigenous people of this country have experienced weaponized illness. And so we honor them and we keep them in our prayers. And without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our brother Lavi Raven, who is um, he's gonna he's gonna be mad at me for saying this, but the truth is that he is a legendary artist from Chicago. He is a graffiti artist, a visual artist. He is the uh, one of the founders of the the, the University of Hip Hop, and is um, a teacher. He's an educator for um, uh, Chicago public schools as well as through the university system as well, and is so is, is a professor as well and um, did a Fulbright scholar in, uh, it was a Fulbright scholar, and I believe it was in New Zealand. So he's traveled the world. His art has taken him throughout the world. His murals are incredible. Check him out on Instagram. Style Killers is the handle, um, just so you can see some of his work. But we're, we are honored and humbled to have him leading this, this workshop. Um, again, brings a wealth of knowledge and experience. So without further ado, thank you so much, Lavi. Oh, thank you, Sadi. I appreciate that introduction and welcoming everyone. It's a blessing to see you all. I can only see a few across the top and I keep scrolling over to see more. Thank you for coming in tonight. And um, what we're gonna be doing is an abbreviated um, session of the In Life Catch workshop um, that you'll be able to carry forward after the session um, to kind of finish out your designs and pull out these incredible um, details on your butterfly. Um, I wanted to first begin by introducing the In Like Catch concept. And the way that um, I bumped into the In Like Catch concept was at um, the Mecha House in Madison, Wisconsin. At my school that I've been teaching at in Chicago, we started with a concept for students called the Beloved Community. And it was kind of an expectation that everyone would ride this idea that we're part of a beloved community. But I noticed that um, when you say something like that to kids or you just throw it on them without actually doing things that define what a beloved community is, there's a gap in understanding and there's a gap in like experience and really appreciating the beloved people that are around you. So when I ran and went to the Metro House in this project, they were, there was, they were talking about In La Catch and I was like, what is In La Catch? And they were like, I am another you, you are another me. Um, and if I remember correctly, it's in la catch, a la ken is the response. And I was like, what is, that is amazing. They were like, it's a Mayan proverb that Luis Valdez helped to um, popularize with his poem to get us to consider the solidarity that we have across our differences. So I went back home and I was like, man, thinking, thinking, it took me three years of thinking and talking to people, 
to figure out how do I work with my African American students on a Mayan concept that will help us to appreciate each other. And that's where this In La Catch workshop came from. So what we are going to be doing today is you're going to be designing your own In La Catch butterfly. Now, I'm gonna to have to every now and then interject a few things because with us being so spread out electronically and kind of teleconferencing in, the original In La Catch workshop is specifically designed so that people work in pairs. So although you'll be doing like half of your butterfly today, if you can find someone to work with on the other half, that would be awesome. Because traditionally in the workshop, people are sitting side by side, talking about the ideas, coming to um, understandings together mutually, and actually acting forth in La Catch in their being and producing an item that is made by more than one person. So today what I'll be asking of you is to um, participate in some of our readings of the In La Catch uh, worksheet and the workshop details, and for a few people to um, popcorn respond to some of the questions that we'll take a moment to respond to on our own and then share out um, a few of those ideas with each other. Um, and then we'll go ahead and trans, uh, transpose some of that, those ideas onto our butterfly. Now, um, one last thing I'd like to say before beginning is that what's so incredible is that the concept of In Like Catch, a common humanity, that we are a reflection of each other is all over the world. And particularly um, referring back to what Sadia said to our indigenous communities and our ancestors, this was a regular concept that everyone kind of followed in different ways whether it's in La Ketch, here Ubuntu, in the Hosa, Zulu areas, Kia Ora in New Zealand, um, we're gonna find this reflection of each other idea in many places. Now, our goal is to act forth on it even more so, but maybe what's happening today will help us to do that even more. So my first question is about materials. Hopefully you have some materials in hand. So I'm gonna do identify some of the things that you need Okay, if you were fortunate enough to be able to print out the In La Catch base, that would be great. It can be on a piece of paper or on a piece of cardstock. You can also work with a blank piece of paper. And I'm gonna give you a little tip to put a, your own circle of design inside. Coloring supplies, such as some colored markers, crayons, and if you're very fortunate, have a piece of yarn or string, perhaps a hole puncher. Many times I've just poked a hole into my butterfly with a knife. And let me see here. And any writing utensils or coloring utensils that, that you have at hand. So how's everybody doing? Do you have something to work with? Okay, awesome. So if everyone could, we're gonna begin by looking at the In My Catch um, document and going over a little bit of the background of what, um, of the history of In La Catch and what it means. Let me see here. And as we're pulling that up, I just wanna also offer um, that there's also, in addition to all the other, you know, universal theme, like, you know, references to In La Catch that you brought up, there's also the Hadith that comes from the Muslim tradition that um, is, says that, you know, the believer is a mirror to another believer. And um, maybe later on when we get into the discussion, we can, we can unpack all this a little bit more, but I wanted to offer that. Thank you so much. Um, and now I'm like, oh man, it's totally fine. I sent you the old version. My daughter helped me to create this super cool new version, okay? But I didn't realize I sent the old version, but it has the same information. Why it's cool that my daughter helped with this one is that she was able to translate everything that was in English into Spanish. And this year was the first time I used it. And it was so beautiful because I had students in my class that had never actually been able to kind of vocalize in their own language and get complete appreciation from their classmates for reading the poem and reading those segments. So if everyone has their document up, we're gonna start with the first two paragraphs. Could I ask for a volunteer reader? Actually, we'll do the first three. Can I ask for a volunteer reader to read us from there is so much craziness to in lock catch means. And if not, I, <laughs> I can do it. 
I yeah. think I heard my name. Okay, so I am another you. And in Marrakesh was recognized by Chicago activists as a way for people to remember how we are connected. Excuse me, wait one second. Can you go above that to oh, the yeah. section? There is so much craziness. Oh, you know what? You did say that, but I thought that was just a wayward comment that you were offering as well. <laughs> That's I was like, yes, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take it from there. There is so much craziness in this world. People get angry at each other so easily. Family struggling to get by. Violence that it seems hard to escape. Conflict with others when we don't even want it. These are some of the struggles we share in common. It seems like we also often forget the good things we share in common. We all have families. We know the meaning of love and friendship. We all know what it means to sing or dance. We have our favorite foods. Most of us enjoy the company of others. We all want better for ourselves. In La Kesh is a way for us to remember the things we share in common, good and bad, and the things that make us unique. In La Kesh means I am another you. Thank you so much. Can we, can we switch up so we can look at the image in a little in more full? I wanted to ask maybe another person Everyone could just kind of stare at that image for a minute. And this is the image from Maya, the Mayan glyph for in La Ketch. Can a person describe what they may see in this image? Uh, uh, I see kind of like a um a yin and yang, like peacefulness mm -hmm. black and white. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. What else do we see? Um, peace, this is Rafiq. Um, I see like the Sankofa, mm. if you will. Can like you explain the bird, that to us? The Sankofa, the bird where, you know, I think it's from a, some African tradition, West Africa, and um, the bird represent like, uh, it, you see a bird is looking back and it has like a seed. Uh, or, or, I can't explain it, uh, Lavi, you the best. That's probably. all right. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I see some of that in there. Because mm. uh, most of it is black and white, it's meant to share, like what you see, all of that, I'm sorry. Mm, no, that that was great. A bird with wings, perhaps. If we look at the shaping of the Enlakesh symbol and the things that are around it, what do you see in the design? Because I always was interested, we often identify the yin and yang, but there's a, a little bit more complexity. What else do you see in the image? I see the rays coming out from the mm -hmm. back and also the kind of illumination around the image. Yes. Which is like, there's that light coming out. Yes. Oh, I love it. And in the center, was, does anyone notice anything very interesting about the center? To me, the first time I saw it, I thought of a snail, like a home, like something that is shaped by you know, pushing things together. And when they meet together, they form this like circle, mm. a spiral. That's, that's what I saw on my own. I love it. And I, then, I, I, I go, I, go, I, please. Um, like it, it looked like steps going up as well. Yes. Now those steps, this is what's really interesting. So the steps going up, and if we pick any one of the four quadrants where the steps meet, do you see the two energy valences that come up in which we would be the antenna as well mm -hmm. that come up, but then you see how they meet, right? So two that still meet as one. So taking all of the things that everyone has identified here, we have this emanating energy that comes forth from a spiral of our combination um, and living with each other and knowing each other as a common humanity, but also our differences, which can be personal, uh, societal, um, familial, so forth and so on, but that we still, yet and still, build outward together and emanate 
this positive energy in reflection with each other, not in reflection on each other. So now let's go down and we'll go down and we'll look at a little bit of the history of the poem. Um, can I get a volunteer reader for Below I Am Another You? Mm, I'll read it. Um, so starting with In Lakesh. Yes. Okay. So In Lakesh was recognized by Chicago activists as a way for people to remember how we are all connected. The purpose of In Lakesh is for us to appreciate each other more and find new ways to build across similarities and differences. Before Jose Alguias um, pop popularized the Mayan phrase in Lakesh in our Maya fans, another writer born on June 26, 1940 in Delano, California, wrote a Mayan inspired poem in Pensamiento Serpentino, 1971, entitled In Lakesh. His name is Luis Valdez, and he is considered the father of the Chicano theater, Teatro Campesino in the United States. The spirit is greater than, than all differences between languages, peoples, races, places, times, even greater than the difference between life and death. Luis Valdez, Pensia Miento, sorry, said in 1971. Awesome. And I was like, man, that was the year I was born, so I knew it was meant to be. Okay, that was beautiful. Let's go down. Let's go down now to the next page, and we're going to get into a little bit of um, meditation now and generating of ideas. So I don't know if everyone can see it okay. All right, we have the poem, In La Catch, I am, an, I am you, or you are me. Is there anyone here that is fluent in Spanish or can read Spanish? I can if needed, if uh, no one else wants to. If you want to? I need, uh, I need a Spanish reader, it can be you or I, and then I want someone to read it in English after. Who would like to read the English version? Someone who hasn't spoken. I can read it. Yay, okay. All right, so, wait, Sadia, did you say you were gonna read it, or you want me to? Whatever, you, you're a call. <laughs> yeah. All right, tu eres mi otro yo. Uh, si te hago daño a ti, me hago daño a mí mismo. Si te amo y respeto, me amo y respeto yo. May I get a reader for the English side? You are my other me. If I do harm to you, I do harm to myself. If I love and respect you, I love and respect myself. Awesome. Just uh, let the simplicity of it just mm -hmm. seep in. So now what I would like for you to do for the rest of our generating of ideas, you have two options. If you were able to like print out the document, you can obviously write on the document. If you were not able to print out a document, all you have to do is pull out a piece of paper or a notebook and roll with us because basically we have about four questions that we're going to answer or four ideas that we're going to and very short kind of responses. Um, and then we're gonna share out, have a couple people share out and then we'll begin doing our illustration. So my first question for you, if you have your notebook and paper ready, after reading the poem, what does it mean to you in your own words? And I usually ask folks if you can give us like three sentences. Of course, you want to give us more. That's totally great. And to get deep with it. So if everyone could take a minute, let's say, uh, let me see, where are we on time? Let me just double check. Let's take about three minutes. And um, what does this poem mean to you? Right, is this where we play the background music or no? <laughs> that's a good, that's a good cue. <laughs> and I can't let it go. Static selector. Yeah, nice and soft, a little meditational. I'm a prisoner of what is wrong. 
Okay, how's everybody doing? Has everyone got something written down? I, I see some people actively writing. Yeah, hook, don't stop. You don't have to stop just because, you know. Um, so now, this has been so beautiful because of our, our, of our small cipher. Um, we're really getting some good share out from folks. So I'm going to ask two people if you can share what the poem means to you. And again, if we can get someone who hasn't shared yet, that would be awesome. No pressure, of course, but we do need two. Well, for me, this is Patricia. Hello, Patricia. Hi. Um, the poem says to me that we are all interconnected that we are one family, mm. sisters and brothers alike. Um, in addition, uh, the poem says to me that there are different dimensions to our being. Um, uh, I wanna say the good, the bad and the ugly, but it's all, <laughs> we're all interconnected and that, um, you know, we are our brother and our sister's keeper because they are us and we are them. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Can I get one more person to add to that wisdom? That was cold. Don't be intimidated. What you got? Who? All right, peace. I'll go ahead. Um, again, this is Rafiq. Um, what this... Sorry, that's Yasin. Um, what this poem means to me, uh, it causes me to reflect on the oneness of the human spirit and the oneness of the human family. Beautiful. Now, what's so weird, right, is, um, is, uh, ah, oh, I'm sorry, the second part. Because sometimes, you know, we kind of, we go to the positive end of the positivity. I'm curious, and this is such a famous proverb all over the world. If I do harm to you, I do harm to myself. What does that mean to you? You could take about two minutes to write a little something down for that. Again, if I do harm to you, I do harm to myself. Take a minute and finalize your thoughts. I'm gonna ask one person, can one person share out? If I do harm to you, I'm harming myself. What does that mean? I think Ndidi was trying to share earlier. Do you wanna share for this one? Um, I mean, sure. All of my stuff is kind of connected. There's this, um, uh, uh, saying within Islam that um, the Muslim is a brother to another Muslim, he doesn't harm them. And there's a saying that says, you know, in our mutual love and respect, the believers and their mutual respect and love for one another are like one body. So when one part, when, uh, when something affects the limb, the mm -hmm. whole body is, 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 um, is plagued with restlessness mm -hmm. and dis-ease, right? So, you know, I once had a, um, 
I had a, it was an imam who was speaking and he was saying that he was talking about we, we were talking about issues that were affecting the community nationally and he was saying well we're in Texas we don't have that problem and and I had to remind him that we're supposed to be so deep in our mutual love and respect for one another that when one part of the body is in pain the whole body is in, in fever and restlessness so uh, just so those are the thoughts that originally came to mind but also COVID is coming to mind because we have a very individualistic um, view a lot of times like in today's society without realizing that the harm that we put out actually ends up affecting us so if I don't if I don't practice safe practices Right, you know, and I and I, I put someone at risk, and I don't think about it because, well, let's say I have it, I put someone at risk, and then and I don't think about it because it doesn't concern me. But then they they get in contact with my family member, right? Mm -hmm. And then that hurts me. I don't see the immediate effect, but it eventually hurts me. That is powerful. Thank you so much. And I love that last example because if we take it from a micro level like that to a macro level, there's so much that we can learn from the bodily metaphor that you use because we are one human body. And if we can start paying attention to every part of us, who knows where we'll be after this. I sure hope it's going to stimulate some positivity and like super love. Um, so the troubles we're going through. Thank you so much. Okay, so now, all right, we're going to get into... Uh, I'm gonna skip the next question, but I'm gonna read it aloud for meditation because it's really important, but I also want us to get a, get a chance to start thinking about um, some of the common struggles and assets and blessings we have. Why is it so hard for people to remember? Oh, is it not on there? What does it say? Oh yes, yeah. Why is it so hard for people to remember the importance of that quote? So I'm just gonna let that sit the wisdom that was just shared about really all ripple effects have impacts. And I think um, if we can ask ourselves, why do we hurt each other? Or why do we inadvertently hurt each other? Why do we purposefully hurt each other? And um, you can write about this um, when I have, this, have that conversation a little later on with someone. But one thing I do want to share is that the young people I work with, they get deep on it. They talk about oftentimes in our own self-protectorate of pain. So we all have grown up with some sort of pain and struggles that we act out when we're frustrated, when we're sad, when we're mad, without always thinking about the impacts on others. But then if we remember that someone else has experienced a unique pain in their own lifetime, um, that we might not do that and we might be more sensitive. And there's something, the young people identify that there's something about our society that has desensitized us to each other's feelings. Um, so I'm gonna move on now. And I'm just flipping while we're here, while, while we're looking at the document, okay? We're gonna look down now at the five struggles and the five assets. And what I would like for folks to do is, this is the way I was kind of thinking about it, so that we will have enough time to, we're kind of doing like a half to two thirds of each of, of, of this, right? So first of all, the initial question, what are 10 ways that all humans, people are similar? And I'm not talking like biologically, you know, that, or uh, physically or things like that. Um, if you could list five struggles tough things we share in common, and list five assets, good things we share in common. Don't use the above examples that we may have talked about or that may have been referred to in the previous discussion. Um, what are things we share in common and things that, I'm assuming, in struggles and, and blessings and assets? Now, the way we're gonna modify this is I'm going to ask you to just do two of each. You could do three if you're feeling really good. But here's the, um, the important part of this. You notice how long that line is there? Let's say you put love as one of your struggles or assets. And some of what's so incredible is that some of them can go both ways, right? Most of them. What I'd like for you to write next to us so that we can understand what you're thinking about is just a sentence description of what that 
blessing asset or that struggle means so that someone else can understand. So, you know, don't assume that we know what friendship is. If you could just tell us in a sentence what it is to you. So now we're going to take, I'm going to say like about four to five minutes. If everyone could do two struggles and two assets or blessings with a sentence descriptor next to it. Sound good? Okay. Let's see, let me do like that. Let me do this. in on folks progress and how they're doing maybe you could give us like a thumbs up if you're just about done or like a thumbs middle if you're like almost or something okay okay <laughs> so then let's take another minute and a half okay i know that's like what a minute and a half let's take a minute and a half to write a little bit more and then, and then we'll share out Okay, so thank you all for taking a moment to write down some thoughts. I'm going to ask for three people to share. And the way we'll do this, um, each person, if you could share one struggle and then one asset and the description that you have for each. Who would like to begin? I'll go. Um, so one that shared experience some of heartbreak in our lives. Yeah. So Breaking up just a little bit. Can you guys hear me? 
It was breaking up for me. Can everyone hear? Yeah, I think it's breaking up a little bit. Maybe someone else can go. Well, right now we can hear you good. Uh, we heard, I heard the, the heartbreak part. He, keep going for a second. Or maybe not. Okay, who's next? <laughs> I'll go. Uh, this is Majid. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Majid from Atlanta? Yes, Arthur, we can hear you. Arthur from Atlanta, OG. Yes. Um, and it's ironic how you said that sometimes, I mean, some of these could be on both sides. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm going to start out with uh, one of the bad things we struggle with is uh, compassion. Mm -hmm. And one of the good things that uh, we have in common is just interacting. Beautiful. Now, would you mind, could you tell us what does capacity mean to you? Compassion. Does interaction mean to you? Well, well, interaction is like we're doing right now. This is a good thing. This is a uh, this is this this self uh, confinement that we find ourselves in has um, really brung out the best of interacting without just being in each other's face. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? Gotcha. It gave it gave us a lot of thought to really just. We're getting more accomplished, I see. It seems like to me, this is personally, that we're getting more accomplished with interacting with each other by way of technology. So as an Indian proverb goes, it says, the wisdom of losing is to gain. That's right. You know, right. So what we lost on one end, we're gaining so much on another end. So that's the, uh, that's the interacting piece but we struggle with the compassion, you know, because just like you said, uh, what hurts you hurts me also. Mm. Some people are not compassionate enough about, you know, it's like, okay, you lost your love. Somebody got shot over the weekend. Ah, just another shooting in Chicago. Where's the compassion? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Love it. That was beautiful. All right. Number two, that was beautiful. Thank you. Can I get another person to share a struggle and an asset? Can you, can, I, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? This is your host, Rui Yehuda, Chicago. <laughs> Yoshi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, right. As I was sitting here, I was thinking about it. Um, one of the things that I feel a lot of all of us may have a hard time or they struggle with it's change, mm. you know, uh, people struggle with change, but uh, on a positive note, a lot of, one of the things that a lot of people work towards is change. So it's both, both, both sides of the same coin, you know, and it just depends on where you are in your life or what you're dealing with at times. Um, uh, like, like the brother just said, like, and, uh, as he was speaking it made me think yeah we we're all going through a change right now you know but this change is also shown and shown, shown and shined a light on a lot of everything just yeah. the lot of us sitting here having this conversation right now um either you're open to learning something new or you might be resistant it's mm. you know it's uh yeah so that was that was what what came to mind when i was reading it thanks yo yo i appreciate that that's my no brother, problem. for sure. So for the sake of time, I'm going to pause the sharing of the struggles and the blessings, but it would be great if you can share something on the chat. What I'm going to begin now is just guiding you through um, transposing those ideas to your butterfly. Now, there's something that's kind of cool about us just doing half of the list, because let's say you're sheltering at home and you have family members at home. You could take the other part of this and you can have the same conversation with them and finish your list with someone at home reflecting that in la catch to make a mutual peace or you could just do it on your own so what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our butterfly and then we're going to begin to put 
two of the assets or struggles on it, and then we're going to illustrate the background of the butterfly with a very simple design of your choosing. So if everyone can first, well, first of all, let me just, I, at the beginning, I just wanted to show you exactly kind of what we're trying to make, okay? Okay, that's it, you don't get to see any more. All right, so now, if everyone can pull out their paper that they have, and I don't know if you have the printout, or if you have a regular piece of paper. It doesn't really matter. If you have the printout or a regular piece of paper without the uh, inline catch symbol on it, what I'd like for you to do is to fold your paper in half. Okay. So fold your paper in half. Okay. And then get out your pair of handy scissors, mine especially from my daughter, my youngest daughter. Yes, thank you. All right, and the way, it, I've cut butterflies a zillion ways, but figured out a very simple format that anyone can kind of cut a butterfly in. So I kind of want you, I don't, I didn't put any like dotted lines on the butterflies I sent out because many people do them different ways. So I'm gonna show you a very simple way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little top of the butterfly and then watch how I do this, okay? So I got it folded. I just cut big wing and watch this. Now I'm going to cut to the middle. Then I'm going to take that that here. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut little bottom or head for the butterfly. And then I'm going to bring in So, very simple butterfly shape. And if your butterfly comes out looking like you're like, man, that doesn't look like Raven's butterfly, in like catch. It's, it's your butterfly. It's going to be beautiful. Okay. All right. So, I've had people, you can do jagged edge, you can cut in, you can go like, ooh. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, and you can do this later with um, family members too, okay? Especially your kids that might be at home e-learning. All right. So I'm gonna give everyone like, you know, a few seconds to finish their cutouts, and then maybe you could give us a thumbs up as to if you're completed with that. Now, while you're doing that, I'm gonna do the first step here, and then I'll tell you what I'm doing, okay? I'm gonna write the first thing on here first and then I'll tell you what I did, all right? Okay. So now what we're gonna do, this is kind of tricky for me because usually I'm drawing, I paint like this, but I draw like this. So please be patient in working with me in these last 10 minutes of our session, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to write in your two assets and your two struggles. Now you can do it different ways. The majority of the time folks like to put the struggles on one side and the assets on the other. Now, I've had many parents who decide we're gonna mix it up because these things in interact in tandem, right? So it's your choice. So what I just did here, this can be my asset side. And I took a colored marker. It depends on what color you wanna use. Actually, I think this is either a dark purple or a dark brown. And I'm using marker first I'm using marker first, and then we're going to put our design over it with crayon or color pencil. Because if you know if you've done this before, color pencils and crayons and markers, it's possible to go over colored pencils and crayons with the marker because it won't be water soluble anymore. So I'm going to put love, and I'm going to put accomplishment. And on this side, let me see, I'll put, mm, loneliness is just one of the ones that often comes up in sessions. Loneliness. And then like a real one that comes up, depending on where I'm at, and, but it's like a real actual thing. I'll, be, I'll put financial difficulties. Okay. And sometimes people have put resource access. Sometimes, you know, there's different ways to describe 
not having quite enough. Okay. So now if everyone, let me see here. Now this is the tricky part. It's like, okay, ooh, let me see. ooh, okay. It's like how difficult it may be for you to see. So I'm gonna scoot this up. Bear with me. I'm gonna get real close. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be a little balanced, but I think we can play with this. Now, once you have that on there, now there's a couple of things. Now, if you did not have the inlock catch symbol in the center, let's see if this works successfully. I have another trick for you, which is that you can have your butterfly and you can take a different, you can make your own circle to put your inlock catch symbol in, right? So I'm taking a can of paint, I'm taking one of my crayons. Okay. Now I'm making a circle. Sorry, man, I don't like this little. Okay, there we go. Right? So I'm making a circle in the middle. And then you can design that circle any particular way you'd like. I could go ahead and put, oh, let me do this other way. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's do a little bit of this. Okay. I can be like, well, I'm going to do a little earth action, right? You don't have to know what the earth, you don't have to draw the earth like real perfect. You can just put some land masses in green. So I'm straight making it up because I know how to draw the earth. It don't work because I paint it all the time. But I'm just making stuff up. Okay. Right. So I got a little land there. And then I'm going to add a little water. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna outline this thing. All right, so you can create your own centerpiece as well if you don't wanna use the inline catch. Okay, now I'm going back to the inline catch that I had up here before. Okay, now ultimately you would add all five of your struggles and your values. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do there's a variety of different ways that you can color this out. I'm going to use crayon because I love the vast amount of space that you can cover with crayon. And what I'm going to do is I would like to choose, I wanna go with some similar kind of color wavelengths. So I'm choosing like three different oranges and reds, but you don't have to do that at all. You could choose red, purple, and green, you can decorate the background any particular way that you want, any way. Now, the other thing that's so great is that when you're working in pairings, you're negotiating how you're gonna decorate that background. No one's idea is necessarily like the right idea, right? It's about the conversation and coming together with something that everyone wants to do and is born from everyone's ideas in that conversation, right? So what I'm doing here is I just did my light color in the middle. Okay, I can get you guys even closer. All right, that's a little better. Okay, now I'm doing, I'm doing this other Ray-Ban I'm doing with, so I got a peaches in the middle. Now you can see I got this middle orange right here. And Sadi, I apologize. I know we're gonna, I, we may be a few minutes over time. I'm trying my best. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have about eight minutes to the oh, end, eight, like till 7.30. Okay, but good. I know you wanted to have a little discussion. So I don't know if maybe ask people color, if you want to offer people to share comments now. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, not yet. Well, they can share comments while they color. Let's. <laughs> You said, <laughs> Are you mean just talking aloud? Right, like as they're coloring. If you want that, however you no, want to no, do no, it. That sounds good. I want because I want to hear people's thoughts, but I also know whatever you guys want to do. I'm coloring at the same time as you're coloring. Well, I actually had a a thought when I was doing the blessings and the struggles of like, you know, shared blessings, shared struggles that we, we share with others. And I had to stop because I'm like, and okay, earlier you had asked, why do we harm each other? And I'm thinking it's because we're socialized in a very individualistic society. So mm -hmm. 
that's just how we're groomed. We're groomed to look yeah. out for ourselves, right? Unless we really like resist that and cultivate community. But um, then the next question you talked about the blessings and the struggles. And, and then I was thinking, I'm like, you know what? In this like, you know, dominant culture, the, uh, the people of the dominant culture and the system that we live within, there are certain people who are able to, who have a sense of entitlement and just show up in spaces, whether it's at Walmart or whether it's, you know, corporate, it's, a, it's the way that the banks decide how to redline. There are certain people who believe that they just, you know, they preserve their own type. And I'm talking about like white supremacists, but doing this, this um, activity had me thinking about like, when we were talking about the blessings and the struggles, I was thinking about how I'm like, man, I don't know. I was just trying to understand. I'm like, how much of this is just human nature and how much of this is like, again, our conditioning. Cause then the, the Mayan people, when they came up with this, however many years ago, did they have the same issue or was it more so that they were like, just trying to further instill an already established understanding of the oneness of the, you know, human spirit. So I'm trying to, like that's just what's been coming to my mind as I'm thinking about this and processing. That is powerful. I got lots of things to say, but I, I won't say anything. I want to hear what other people have to say. I can. I just wanted to know what the in lock had. I came late. Can you um, just briefly tell me what that the symbol in the middle is about? Well, the symbol in the middle is the Mayan symbol for in lock cash, which means I am you, you are me, or I am another you, and you are me, responded to with Allah Ken, when someone greets you this way. And we're using this as an exploration of our commonalities and our differences. And I'm gonna mention in a minute um, what, what the last sheet on the worksheet talks about, which is our uniqueness, which is extremely vital for us to recognize, to really appreciate one another. One, I was going to say something real quick. I ran to this brother, Weston, uh, in Omaha, and he said, you know what? It's time to get past the word, word tolerance. He said, tolerance is the evil word. Because he said, tolerance has, no, has nothing to do with reaching out to appreciate someone else's being and where they're coming from. He said, I want to start substituting in the word appreciation. And he said, and there's a challenge in that word. He said, you can tolerate something and not have to do anything to learn anything about anyone else. He said, but when you force yourself to see what you can appreciate, it's a whole different journey within and without. And I really like that in terms of making more connection between us. Okay. So now, let me see. Okay. So I wanted to, I don't know how everyone's doing, but here's where I'm at now. So I showed you. I got my little, um, let's see, I break anything. What I'm going to do now is add like little ornamentation on the wings. So I'm going to put, I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to do like swirls. And I know the lighting makes it a little difficult to see my model, but I will show you up close. And then I'm going to do some like big dots and little dots. I'm going to do them alternating. Big dot, little dot. Does anyone else have something they'd like to share in reflection? Because I know you're what they're one of your favorite treats. Yeah. I get more. Um, I think uh, we'll, we'll just see if, if one more person wants to share and La Vie, just because we have a few minutes and the sun is either setting or right about to set and i want i just you know want to honor the sunset prayer yeah so maybe if, if there's if there's one more person who wants to share or if you want to if we can just do our group picture now we can hold up our butterflies um, how does that and, sound you all want to do that and honoring that everyone just began their butterflies, like right, I ran like a racehorse on it, right? We could at least we could at least just show them if they're not like complete. Just you showing show the us, image. Yeah, show the piece of what you got for us. Ooh. Okay. 
You see, I drew my own little in like symbol. <laughs> <laughs> and that's tough. That, that's good. <laughs> I love that, Rachel. <laughs> All right, my people. And oh, yes. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't see them all. Wait. Okay. You have to scroll over. Okay. Where's the grid? They don't have a grid on there. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's good. So now, um, hopefully, uh, I'm sorry, where I began, mm -hmm. um, just being transparent, like the Inlock Catch workshop, because we really wanted to be a thoughtful workshop, is usually about an hour and a half long in itself. So we, you know, abbreviated it, brought it in. But where we would go from here is we would ask parents to co-write a seven-line poem. Mm -hmm. um, explaining in lock catch to them. So basically I tell people you can alternate lines. One person can do half, the other person can do half. A minimum of seven lines and we have those folks share out. Um, and then we also introduce people to fonts and different butterfly designs uh, from indigenous cultures around the world to use as references in their designs. And you can do anything on your butterfly design. I mean, you can do anything. And then the last sheet of the, um, of the guidelines or the information is about uniqueness and basically asking you because uh, I remember one elder was like in a session it was so great she was like I am not you and you are not me <laughs> okay <laughs> and she was like our experiences are not the same right and that is the other side of the, of the coin of them mm. where I asked you know we are especially unique and different why is it important to remember that everyone is unique be detailed. Think about a best friend. What are three things you appreciate about that person? What makes them unique? Think about a family member. Three things you appreciate. And then um, it's an interesting one too. We used to say, think about an enemy, but we've kind of changed that to like an antagonist or someone that frustrates you in life. Because the young people will be like, I don't have an enemy, but I do have someone that's getting on my nerves, right? So we changed that language. And then closing out with just what you, what you, think and have experienced after doing this type of project with others. Um, so I want to thank you all for uh, participating in this awesomely abbreviated In La Catch workshop. Thank you all for sharing your wisdom, uh, your thoughts, and your compassion, um, and your understandings. And I hope that you will continue to pursue the various uh, derivations of In La Catch that exist um, throughout our world because it the concept is all over the place and you know they say the right to bear arms which is so confusing to me I was like these fools they got it wrong it's like the right to bear arms mm. we do that all over the earth Ooh. yeah <laughs> the metal. No need um, metal. thank you thank you so much Lavi uh, appreciate you so much there's some things in the chat that I will share with you, we'll share with you as a follow-up, just because you've given us, we want to give back to you. So thank you again for your time. Thank you everybody for joining, participating, and engaging the topic. I know I'm certainly walking away with things to reflect on. Um, but yeah, I just want to thank everybody again. Remember, if, if you can share your reflections or your photos or your pictures to social media and tag Style Killers, tag Iman Central, hashtag Iman Arts, um, thank you all so much for joining and it's just a closing I want to just share um, you know express gratitude to the most high for time uh, the time that we've spent together thank you guys peace